Well, hello YouTube, I'm back with another video and you've seen the title, you know what it's about. But before you click away thinking that this is a VV bashing video, let me clarify. There's nothing inherently wrong with the platform itself. Uh, in fact, it's very successful and the numbers speak for themselves uh, if you just ask anyone. The issue, however, from what I can see, lies in the marketing strategy and who it's marketed to. And that's what we're going to get into. Now, VV seems to be targeting crypto enthusiasts, more than traditional collectors, essentially. So unlike walking into a store and buying a cool figurine because you genuinely like it, uh, VV caters to those looking to make a quick buck, essentially. Um, but there are collectors in VV, I hear you cry. Well, yes, there are, but there are also a lot of people who are stacking collectibles and shilling various ones to make them seem worth more than they actually are. And their plan isn't just to hold them forever, uh, they see it as an investment. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, I don't find anything wrong with that, but it does create a bit of a situation on the platform. Um, because this is where people buy collectibles with the sole expectation of prices skyrocketing. They crave a narrative, a utility that justifies the ever increasing cost. And that's what everyone's talking about all the time, the utility, the narrative. And if that narrative or utility is not presented, then they have buyer's remorse and they don't really want the product in the first place because they're not a part of the fandom. So therefore, they want to shout about it on social media. So when I first joined Vivi, I wasn't actually sold on this whole investment thing. I, uh, I bought a few things, um, but at the time of doing this, I was uh, doing a lot of live streams, which meant that I couldn't actually buy the things anyway. And a lot of the things that I didn't win, um, I didn't really mind that much anyway. And I didn't go into the market and buy them afterwards um, because it, it wasn't really my thing. I did figure that Omi, however, would have a place and go well due to the narrative that the team created and that was uh, around at the time. However, obviously that all changed somewhat. So uh, I guess, you know, we just have to wait and see on that one. Um, but then, of course, Vivi was compromised by thousands of bots and, of course, the fake gem scandal. That, with a combination of not having cash out unless you were patient, because some people were patient enough, meant the prices went berserk. Um, and, you know, it wasn't really fans buying the collectibles. That was the thing. It wasn't fans of the actual things themselves. It was just an event essentially caused by FOMO and criminal actions that made uh, the, the collectibles seem a lot more valuable. Therefore, a sudden false narrative of guaranteed gains took hold uh, and FOMO set in. And like many others, I, of course, got caught up in the hype, buying more and more with the hope of getting more and more money. Um, but if you look at the recent Black Pink drop, just as an example, it didn't exactly do that well. It didn't sell out. Um, but that's likely because a large portion of the Blackpink's fan base, the Blinks, uh, simply aren't interested in the whole NFT and crypto thing. In, in fact, the main people buying were the VV fam to flip or maybe to have it in their collection. Who knows? Uh, you know, to use it in the showrooms or what have you. But the fact is that not every fan is going to want every piece of memorabilia as well. Uh, I have friends who are very, very massive fans of James Bond, but they've never once bought anything on the VV platform. And I guess this is because crypto is something that only a small subset of people are ever going to want to dip their toe into. So therefore, we can't expect the fandoms to come in droves just to buy something on VV because there's plenty of other opportunities out there to show their fandom. However, this lack of genuine fan interest is further compounded by the current market situation, of course. The falling crypto prices discourage people from jumping in. If you see something slow, you don't want to bother, uh, especially when they suspect others are just looking to flip their collectibles for a quick profit. Now, remember, the reason prices are falling is essentially because many bought in with the sole intention of reselling at a higher price. So when that doesn't happen, they're happy to just get rid of it at a lower price. It's basically a house of cards built on speculation and it's not genuine fandom at all. So when people are saying VV is dead because it didn't sell out or VV is dead because there's no utility, maybe we should be asking, is VV really dead or is it just that person's preferred version of VV that is dead? VV is a cool platform with officially licensed collectibles, but the marketing strategy fosters an unhealthy obsession with flipping for profit, or it has up until now at least. Uh, remember, collecting shouldn't be about that. It should be about a passion, not just chasing a price pump. And I think that is the difference that they're trying to say now. 
But do your research, buy what you truly like, and don't get swept away by the get rich quick mentality. And for all the blinks out there, and maybe you're thinking that Vivi isn't the place to show your support for your fandom. So for that, I say that, of course, that's your choice. If you believe some of the FUD that people spout about Vivi being a scam site and dead, etc, etc, and most importantly, hurting the environment, because that's one that goes around a lot, um, then, yeah, obviously, you don't have to partake in Vivi. That's your choice not to do so. But one thing I will say, and that is that digital collectibles may well be the future, and all signs are pointing to it being the case. Thanks for watching.